A new generation of electric cells known as a fuel cell is now in production. The fuel cell is unlike a standard rechargeable battery. The chemical reaction inside a normal battery will eventually stop producing electricity. The chemical action inside a fuel cell is continuous, this is because the cells are connected to a constant, external fuel supply. Fuel cells are twice as efficient as internal combustion gasoline or diesel engines. The only waste is water. It is already used to generate in space probes and the space shuttle. Automobile manufacturers are now using it in the next generation of automobiles, the electric car. A basic cell consists of a stacked assembly, made up of two outer field flow paths, surrounding a polymer electrolyte with backing plate, plus the anode and cathode's electrodes. The cell's basic parts consist of 1. Channel flow plate 2. Backing plate 3. Anode 4. PEM 5. Cathode 6. Backing plate 7. Flow plate. The main part of the cell is the proton exchange membrane, which is placed between the anode and the cathode. The anode and cathode are coated on one side with a platinum catalyst layer. The proton exchange membrane is also called the polymer electrolyte membrane. It has an ability to only allow positive ions to pass through it, while rejecting electrons. As seen the hydrogen atoms separating into electrons and protons with the protons entering the proton exchange membrane. Hydrogen fuel is channeled through the field flow plates to the anode on one side of the fuel cell, while oxygen is channeled to the cathode on the other side. When hydrogen fuel is channeled into its fuel flow plate, the anode platinum catalyst causes the hydrogen to split into positive hydrogen ions, protons, and electrons. The PEM allow the protons to pass to the cathode side, while at the same time creating a condition of free electrons. The free electrons that are produced at the anode, are conducted through an external load as electric current. This is shown with a load of a small fan. At the cathode side of the fuel cell, oxygen from the air, along with the electrons from the external circuit combine to create water, which flows, from the cell. This results in the heat and water and air are the only waste products. The fuel cell's design and construction depend on the manufacturer. This animation shows a different design with the same results. Hydrogen fuel and oxygen are channeled into the core at the anode. A catalyst causes the hydrogen to split into protons and electrons. The polymer electrolyte membrane allows only positive charged ions to pass through it to the cathode. At the cathode, the electrons and positively charged hydrogen ions combine with oxygen to form water that is drained. In order to obtain the desired amount of electric power required, individual fuel cells are combined to create a fuel cell stack. By increasing the number of cells, increases the voltage while increasing the surface area of the cells, increasing the current output. A new generation of energy cell is the photovoltaic solar cell. It depends on tiny particles of energy that exist in sunlight, called photons. The solar cell is made of silicon in a crystalline form, Impurities are added to improve conductivity. The process of adding impurities to the silicon is called doping. The type of doped silicon is referred to as a semiconductor. If silicon is doped with the element phosphorus, the silicon is called N-type, for negative, since it has an excess of free electrons. If silicon is doped with the element boron, the silicon is called P-type. P for positive type. The silicon has free openings for electrons. It is positively charged. The following animation is a representation of a crystal matrix semiconductor, the N-type semiconductor and the P-type semiconductor. The cell is a sandwich of two layers of different silicon semiconductors. Small particles from other elements have been added to the layers to alter their electric properties. A protective glass plate covers a N-type semiconductor material and a P-type semiconductor. The semiconductors form the negative and positive posts. The N-type semiconductor is a crystal matrix layer that has a surplus of electrons. The P-type semiconductor is also a crystal matrix layer with fewer electrons. Free electrons drift across the junction form the P-layer. When light strikes the surface of the cell, the semiconductor absorbs some of the energy. The energy knocks electrons free from its crystal matrix. 
This results in current flow into an external load. The PV or photovoltaic cell also have internal magnetic field, which force free electrons that are freed by the light to travel in one singular direction. Solar cells come in a wide array of sizes, from very large to fairly small, the video shows one of the small units complete with output leads. The following segment is provided as additional information to better understand batteries and electric current as it flows through a copper conductor. A battery connected in series with a copper wire conductor causes an electric current to flow through it. If you were able to see inside it, you would see billions and billions of atoms that have electrons separating from them. The electrons jump from one atom to the next, traveling in short bursts along the wires. Individual electrons push and only move a fraction of an inch, but like pushing a row of balls they collide, creating a knock and bang effect all along the wire. The banging effect of the electrons on each other gives the electricity an effect that the electricity is traveling at the speed of light 186,000 miles per second or 300,000 kilometers per second. This is shown with multiple copper conductors in an insulated jacket. A battery causes a potential difference which causes electrons to flow. The term voltage is used to describe the pushing strength of electricity. Batteries are rated in voltage with an ampere hour designation. The electric current flowing from a battery is related using the term ampere. One ampere is equal to a flow rate of electrons of one coulomb per second. The ampere hour is the amount of charge delivered by one ampere in one hour. Since one ampere has a flow rate of one coulomb per second, the one hour flow rate is as follows. 60 second times 60 minutes which equals 3600 coulombs. To have an idea of the number of electrons that are in 3600 coulombs we have to use our imagination. One coulomb is the current equal to 6250 to the power of 15 per second. This is an unbelievable number. If we had that number of flies in Ontario and somehow managed to kill all of the at once, as they flew around, they would fall to the ground at once. The flies would represent a pile of flies that is 6 feet high and be packed to over 500 flies per cubic inch. The flies would cover an area of a 50,000 square miles for each coulomb. For 3,600 coulombs, it would cover an area 198 times 10 to the power of 6 square miles. Keeping in mind that the whole area of Canada is only 3,855,174 square miles. Certain batteries are also rated according to its discharge duration, over an 8-hour period. As an example, a battery delivers a constant output current of 50 amperes. In an 8-hour period would have an ampere hour of 50 times 8 hours, which equals 400 ampere hours. It should be understood that the ampere hour rating is not a constant, except under certain control conditions, such as voltage, temperatures and time. Most of the previous cells were combined to form different voltages. These different combination of connecting the cells is usually referred to a battery. Most times the term battery and cell are often interchanged, however in the technical field they are not the same. In order to provide higher output voltages or currents, batteries are connected in various series or parallel connections. In order to create a higher output voltage, the batteries are connected in series, just as individual cells were connected. To increase the output, current the batteries have to be connected in parallel. This is because the output capacity of a cell is dependent on the surface area and quality of the electrodes. The following illustration show a few of these arrangements, with their connection circuit. Here we have three 1.5 volt batteries wired in series, the total output voltage is 4.5 volts. The current output is increased by the two extra batteries. The three batteries, that are connected can also be represented by using a schematic drawing with symbols replacing the pictorial drawing. Here we have three batteries are placed in parallel with each other, in this type of connection, the output voltage is held more constant, while the output current is increased. The diagram is a schematic wiring diagram of the previous three batteries that are connected in parallel. All batteries have what is known as internal resistance. Resistance is a phenomenon that obstructs the flow of free electrons. It is created by many factors, such as the impurities in metals, electrolytes, and so on. 
the temperature, the resistance of the connections as well as the current path. The total internal resistance is the resistance that can be determined between the terminals of an unloaded battery. When an electric current flows through an external load, another phenomenon occurs, which is called resistance. It is similar to the internal resistance created internally in a battery. If the current is opposed by a resistance, a voltage is dropped or placed across that resistance, causing a voltage decrease in that circuit. Resistance is measured in a term called ohms and is discussed in the next session, when Ohm's law is explained. This concludes this video, watch for more and refer to our technical books 1 through 5 for repair procedures and techniques. Email us at twmenterprises at roger.com or visit our website at twmmediaservices.com. The books and DVDs can be purchased online through Amazon.ca.